How's it going everyone? Welcome back to a new video. This video then I want to deep dive into some future tech, technology, whatever you want to call it, uh, that you can now start to see making its way to the serving soldier in the British Army. As a self-professed professed tech nerd, I love everything sci-fi and all the rest of it. I just feel like now, today, in 2025, it's an exi exciting time to be serving uh, because of all this new kit and equipment. Definitely me looking back now through my time, like definitely over the last sort of like sort of four or five years of this part of my career, the, the sort of increase on this tech that's available now to the soldiers on the front line is, is just mental to where it was when I very, very first joined. And definitely for any of you veterans and stuff out there, and um, we're going to have a look at some stuff that uh, on this today's video, which will probably supersede of, of what you had in, during your days whenever you were serving. And it'll be interesting to know throughout the video, just drop it in the comments and we'll, we'll engage in there and, and what your feelings and what you think about it and what you had uh, back in your day and how you, how you see would it have made it in your day any different. Now, I know uniform and all the rest of it has changed so much over the years. We're not going to be focusing on that in today's video. It is, it is very much the tech aspect of it. Uh, so tech and software uh, available to support the tech uh, in the field. Um. Now, before we get into the deeps of this video, I 1 million percent know you cannot, we cannot stray away from the core skills which uh, provides a British soldier, everything you would go to expect, Medicaid, navigation being the big thing, uh, which will come apparent into some of the bits of tech that we're going to look at today. Um, but it's all about looking at how, let's not get rid of them skills, certainly not medication, uh, as in how to treat a casualty and all the rest of it. Um, but navigation being the key thing here is... We're not getting rid of the skill of how to navigate with bearings, compass and map, that kind of stuff. But it's how we can get technology then to complement our already known skills and then to how to make things, <clears throat> excuse me, just progress a lot more faster and more efficiently for the operator on the ground. Because if you have been serving in the armed forces at any stage of your life, you all know, that especially whenever you're in a sort of a, a commander sort of appointment uh, and you've got zero onto you and they're looking for a lock stat, for anyone who doesn't know what that means, it's, it's where you are on the ground. And if you haven't been keeping track of that the whole way through it, you might have to stop uh, and do some sort of calculations uh, to work out where you are to then send a grid reference to your bosses all the way back to let them know so they can track where you are and track the battlefield as such. Now imagine you're, it's not too bad if you're on like a longer patrol and you have the time to be able to do that. Um, but if we're looking at it in a many potential like an urban environment or you're actually in contact so there's enemy firing at you, you know, all them sort of uh, obstacles are there. Uh, doesn't help with the efficiency then of delivering and passing back where we are. So there's a lot of stuff nowadays where it's just literally it's just split second and um, you can tell that person where you are and even so when we look at stuff now we're going to be talking about you don't even need to tell the person they're just consistently tracking you so you don't need to the constantly giving them the sort of sit rep where you're on the ground they can just look at a, a screen and see exactly where you are there then that takes keeps your head as in the operator the person who's at the very front your mind in that sort of operation that focus and all the rest of it so we're going to be looking at bits and stuff about that there with uh, sort of ATACs and different bits of computer equipment um yeah, so what we'll do is we're going to look at the drones first um, because they, they are so massive uh, that, that have just completely, just absolutely exploded out of nowhere. I mean, you've got to really look at drone technology now. And I, obviously, we know that the big, massive drones have been around for quite a bit of time, but we're talking about the sort of smaller consumer drones. And we're going to look at the consumer market first before we even talk about military stuff. Like the drones, at the very first DJI drone, I don't know when it came out, maybe the 20, you know, the in the teens maybe 2014 15 and around that era it could be slightly known fact when was it definitely the last sort of 10 to 15 years but now if you look at the very first dji drone which was that you know the big sort of quad one with the four sort of um props on it and the blades whereas now as you can get these drones now which are partly the size of your hand and the footage is supersedes any sort of probably cameras that you have in your pockets and all the rest of it and it doesn't take a lot of um skill set to learn how to fly it and now in 2025 even some of them consumer drones are going to autonomous ones um, i think it's dji neo it's called 
it's a small gimmicky drone but you can sort of any sort of person can just put it up and then all the artificial sort of software with inside that can track you and move around and follow you in the consumer aspect of it so you can see just how far we've gone in regards to that um, so it's really exciting to see with that short space of time on this sort of the jump the technology has had what it's going to look like in the sort of 10 to 15 years time so what we're going to look at is a bit of a video here i believe the first one there is about uas and it is going to be um just i've talked about it we're going to see it in action because a picture paints a thousand words i'm going to have a bit of a chat about it um once we get through it so let's get amongst this video Drone can help us massively because it can give the leading commander on the ground a much greater situational awareness. He himself doesn't have to be situated with that drone team. He can be pushed far forward and focus on the battle, but still have that feed of information coming to him from a dedicated UAS team. We've got obviously normal cameras as well as thermal, which is giving us a greater ability to see through uh, soft cover, things like um, tree canopies, uh, vegetation, etc. Also uh, identify entry points of buildings, windows, stuff like, stuff like that. One of the drones we've been using is larger uh, and it's got a longer range on it, so we're just using that to find depth enemy positions or routes in, etc. ready for attacks. And that takes quite a dedicated operator with a commander feeding information forward to myself and other commanders on the ground. The other drone we've been using is slightly smaller, able to be deployed quickly by a section and they can throw that up. It gives that section commander their own situational awareness plus allows them to have other effects on the ground as well. So obviously you can send drone somewhere where you can, send like a section of men right around the back of a building, around the back of a wood block, so you can see you know, entry points to a building, to a compound, things like that. So fighting the night's always been hard. You've got pause it there, go on to a new bit. Um, so Drones there, you can see it quite clearly there that they're used to, I think I believe it's one Yorks, two Yorks, I'm not sure, I can't remember the top of my head, but who are doing the tribes and development of all that kind of new stuff, which is one thing I want to say as well. Finally, now we've actually got actual soldiers trialing kit uh, with the mindset of using it. So whenever it reaches the hands of the user, um, you know it's been put through its paces by someone with your own experience and their own mindset to do the job. And, and the key thing there, we, you heard them talking about regards to um, seeing things which we cannot see, which is 100% um, really, really good. Because if you look at maybe Middle Eastern places and stuff, put a compound walls and all the rest of it, 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 it keeps the soldier out of harm's way for as long as possible if there was to be any sort of difficult scenario that they're going into. And then all these other drones with the thermal imaging and all the rest of it can really pick up heat um, pretty quickly. And that really helps whenever you're talking about, you know, operating in kind of rural, rural environments and all the rest of it. Um, and what's good to see as well, it's just younger soldiers now, they're they're having to be more tech savvy, savvy. And you could argue, is that because, you know, what they've grown up through their whole sort of, you know, you know younger age and school years and all this tech being involved, uh, you know, being around. Um, you could make it probably the same argument where it was back maybe the same 10, 20 years ago where people were more sort of functional and out more. So they, they took to more physical army training better because their bodies are more conditioned whereas now um you can maybe people argue where that's not the case now with people coming through but you know there's different fitness programs to bring people um to get them strong and robust but that aspect of being in and around technology as they're growing up means that when you present this kind of new bits of technology and stuff to the soldier they they, they can problem solve and learn it a lot quicker um, so it's not as if you're trying to teach someone, f f you know, completely from the, the, the lower level where they actually have no idea whatsoever. And, and it really works well. I, I've just literally come back from an exercise, which was a defense exercise. Um, it really, I see it working for a, so they were kind of losing there as kind of reconnaissance role. So you're kind of looking over things and trying to get a good feel of an area before you then uh, go in yourself with your team. But when you speak, when you come from it from a perspective, from a, a commander's perspective, uh, whenever they're planning, um, and, and that's something they get really good in the military where there's a lot of people, we, you know, really analyze a situation, plan it to a T, use all the sort of skill sets that we know how to plan it. And, and then before we're going in, this is a really, really great aid because if you think about it back in the day, if, you know, 
someone was involved in the situation and all they could bring back the commander was like this kind of like sketch map which is kind of like a like a stick man and like kind of like these kind of things that may work well for people but if you've got all this equipment on you and the drone's up there and the, the commander can fully see where everyone is where friendlies are all the rest of it, it can really really help them efficiently make a really good solid plan before they go off into it so that's, that's I, i'm a big advocate for drones um quite clearly because i'm into it and that's another thing i would see whereas people are going to get involved in drone teams and stuff within the their own sort of units these drones we just sort of seen they're easier to use they're not you don't make a specialist sort of high level course most infantry and other units will have them and um, but it does take that person who wants to if you're going to put your hand up to go i want to get amongst that you need to be a little bit invested in it because there is a little bit of learning in your own time and it's not just flying a drone during exercise you it's a skill set that you need to sort of learn a few times i would argue it's maybe these drones maybe yes it's like learning a bike once you've learned it you've got it but then to be able to fly it more efficiently and in round sort of obstacles it's something that needs practice and for someone to to get really good at it uh, they have to consistently do it so it's no different than being like a sniper you know you're gonna have to be on the range quite a lot to really hone in your shot and um, all these sort of different sort of skill sets in their military this is just in another one of these skill sets now um, so what we're going on to now is uh, fighting at night. So we're going to put this on now and see what stuff we've got coming in. Limited situational awareness. You struggle to see guys, struggle to see where you're going, where the enemy are. With the technology we've got at the moment, with the drones, they're providing much greater oversight. Uh, we can have night vision on them, we can have thermals which can track our own positions plus enemy positions. Thermal being the key we'll part see there. New night vision sights thousand times better than what we've used previously real game changer thermal is how wars are fought now being able to see through places that you wouldn't be able to see through normally being able to ping potential enemy positions or enemy from caves away that you wouldn't be able to see with your naked eye or even through an lds having that capability puts us in front of the enemy if we can see the enemy before they can see us then we can maneuver or even engage before they even know we're there so yeah, thermal thermal's massive. There's there's dedicated YouTube channels that just talk about thermal and then how to defeat your own thermal sort of signature. This is a big one. Much greater situational awareness. It's tracking your positions, tracking all your subunit positions as well. It gives you like a solid data feed between uh, your commanders. If one lead section identifies enemy positions, they can uh, identify it, pin it on the DSA. And everyone else then knows where what that enemy position is, how many enemy, what they're doing, that information push is just really effective. Yeah, so that one there, um, obviously didn't go into detail about it, and that's some of the open source kind of stuff that you may see online. Will then sway off because I get hit by all the time while you're giving away all your secrets. I never give any away tactics or any sort of tech stuff that's not open source. So that's kind of why they cut it there. And you can see there where they didn't talk too much about our new night sights and stuff because the older ones, the monocle, there's loads out there. Everyone can get their hands on them, all the rest of it. But we have got new ones in now. Um, so the double ones, and I'm not going to the detail of it, but genuinely, if you've ever, like, if you're a sci fi nut as well and you've watched like The Predator and how he sees, like, that's what we're talking there. Um, and it'd be really cool. I have not heard of it yet. Where if we get to the stage where, um, you know, where the drone within the section is up, where that a feed comes down through a goggle, and then everyone can get that kind of like eyes on from above, um, as well as being able to see. So it's called it's not virtual. It's called augmented reality. So virtual reality is where you're in it. It's completely not real. Augmented reality is putting something else, but it's in real time. If that makes sense. Yeah, so that's there. And then that little computer there was all about the navigation stuff. That is so, so good uh, and so efficient. But clearly, you do need to have um, the skill set of being able to navigate in the ground because you can use all the, you know, looking at key features and trying to work out where you are um, in conjunction with it. But it is so good because then you could just drop in your RVs and stuff so if someone else can see where the RV is going to go and you can go uh, and meet them there. You know, you're you're coming off comms and stuff, so you're not constantly sending all the time, and you're not emitting your sort of RF stuff. People could also argue then because clearly this all needs signal to work to each other. So then people or whoever you're against could pick up on that and spoof it and all the rest of it. But that's the key part there. Of you also need to have the actual old school uh, lessons of actually how to navigation, uh, sorry, navigate with map and compass. 
in case GPS is spoofed in any way. So that means like the enemy's got him and just confused it on you. Um, but definitely from a, a point of view where if you've ever been in around the military environment and it's just that chaos of everyone ar running around and you're trying to work out where people are and on the, the radio gets very busy, but just that casual flip your screen down can see where all your sort of people are where they're going and all the rest of it and even from a between sergeant's point of view looking down if you know if there was ever anything where you know now, now, now i haven't heard of this existing yet like but if someone was to become a casualty where it kind of beeps on them i don't know imagine like because we have all these heart rate monitors for fitness don't we so imagine you had your everyone had like a heart rate monitor kind of on them and that would emit the signal to the to the atac which i think it's called is the actual official name i could be wrong if that's a new one they're they're talking about but then that's everyone's connected. So if anyone is pick, picking up an injury, yes, it will not give the specific um, mechanism or what the actual injury is. But at the back, you could be looking down and seeing like, you know, the, the, you know two sections point man is down. Um, I need to go there. And then all their details are in there. There's that number, blood group and all the rest. And then that can go straight back. So it's that whole connectability. That's completely out of my sort of realms on how to create all that. But I think just... I'm a big advocate of it and embracing it all because it's just what that sort of future battlefield is going to look like is going to, it gets me excited and I'm snapped that, you know, I'm where I am now in my career. I'm more jealous of any of you who are about to join the military or you're thinking about it in a couple of years because maybe you're, you're, you're in your teens, but all that kind of tech, that flipping super excites me and it just, uh, I really look forward to see how that progresses in the future. Um, so that's a little bit of something different there. Um, there's a lot of stuff going through in regards to kit and equipment, tech, uh, software and all the rest of it. I'll look to do more of these videos um, as we progress through. This is a different little style for you. Um, if you got anything from it, please drop it in the comment section below. And I will see you again on the next video. Thanks so much for joining me and see you again.